three, two, one. Engage rockets, launch! Hello guys, I'm Orbeta, your Welsh engineer, and welcome to How Do I Launch a Rocket? In this short tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to engineer, how to build your rocket, and how to launch your rocket up into space. And I'll be showing you some tips and some tricks, perhaps, hopefully, that'll get you on your way into space without your rocket flipping out, destroying itself on the way, or even your Kerbals losing their minds. Anyway, let's go to the vehicle assembly building, and I will show you how to build something similar to this, perhaps of your own design. This is a stock design by KSP. And then we can work our way on what you need to know before you can get into space. So we'll see you there. Now, this is the Kerbal X design that we were just launching up in space. But this is a stock craft. Now, I've loaded this game up in sandbox mode, which I suggest you guys do for the first start off, especially if you're new to the game. And then you have these crafts that you can choose from. Now, the largest rocket, I suppose the easiest one to get into orbit, is the Kerbal X, which is the one we're showing now. However, there are a couple of other craft on here you can play around with. Play at your own leisure, see how they're built and how they work. But what I want to do is start with a new design and show you what goes into building it. So let's click new there. Let's first off go choose our pod, which will be the command pod mark 1, or mark 2, sorry. And there's a couple of things you need first before we start building the rocket. Now, if you guys don't know, if you started off at fresh with KSP, you need to know that you engineer your rocket in reverse, yes. For what the last thing you want to do is your Kerbals to land safely on the planet. So for that, what we go to is utility down here, and you should see some parachutes. I suggest use the Mark 16 XL parachute, fit it on top there, and there. Look, it's in the staging as well. That means your Kerbals return safely. Now, we've got the atmosphere to attend to as well. Because if we go into the atmosphere, this prod, prod might survive. But to give it help surviving, we'll go to aero, no, we want thermal. And we need a heat shield. Because if you ever you watch the shuttle or anything else into the atmosphere, you know, things can burn up in the atmosphere because of... Well, friction or shock heating or whichever you think is the correct term for it. So now that we are protected to enter the atmosphere and we'll land safely, let's carry on and build the rocket itself. Now, as you've probably seen that most rockets are built in stages. So let's go to coupling and you can see here the separators. Now these will add staging to your rocket. Now if I go ahead and add one to here, you see it's created a little fairing for our heat shield to protect it. It's created another stage down here. And what it'll do, when you're in flight mode, you press space and you'll activate the next station. So if I press space when I was on the launch pad, this will separate and we'll be left with our capsule. That's simple and easy way to work the game. Okay, so as I said, everything's built in reverse and in stages. So we need a craft that will get into the final burn on getting into orbit. Now, as you know, probably know, most rockets don't end up huge in space. Like, you don't see the entire launch vehicle in space after launch. So what we need is a little small stage, because saving weight helps a lot. It helps you have a lot more delta V, which is a term we'll get into in a moment. Which is probably, the basic way is the amount of fuel or how fast you can travel in space, basically. Now, on this one, I suggest you use the Poodle engine, and I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that this is the Rocomax X200 fuel tank. A simple, a little rocket, similar to the Kerbal X craft, but this is probably as far as we're going to go in copying that design. Now, when we go into space, we'll have things like electric, electric charge, so that's one thing we'll have to handle. So, go to electricity, get a photovoltaic capsule, um, panel I always like to make sure that toggle snap is on and toggle symmetry to four ways and perhaps put them on the side anyway you want to actually you can put them on the capsule just don't put it on the hatch otherwise your kerbals won't be able to get out and I always like to put some Batman batteries on this Batman batteries you say yes look at this Batman 
batteries. <laughs> and are you guys looking forward to the Batman movie? Lego one at that. <laughs> Anyway, now that we've got electricity, we've got a rocket, this should be the final burn for us to get into orbit, but we need a stage for us to get through the thickest part of the atmosphere. That is the biggest hurdle of launching into space, and that is the atmosphere. Damn atmosphere, wish we didn't have one. <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and build the atmospheric stage, I suppose you could call it. Put another Rocco Max brandy couple of there. And there's a couple of things you could use. I suggest perhaps using the jumbo rocket fuel tank, as this will make things a lot easier. However, I suppose we want to show you off some of the new features of the game, and that is why I'm doing this tutorial. So perhaps we should use the Rocket Max X200 fuel tank. Now, if you want to copy a part in the game, a quick tip, Hold down Alt on the keyboard if you're on the key on the PC or Mac or, or on Linux. Now hover over the part you want to copy, click it, and you should copy it. Now say if you want to copy an entire row of parts, say the decoupler and the fuel tank, hover over the decoupler, hold down Alt, click, and you've copied all of them. But what we want to do is just have about two tanks here. It's the same amount of fuel as a Rocco jumbo fuel tank but there's a tip I want to show you now what we need is the rocket engine itself to get us through the atmosphere now we could use the skipper which is a big engine it's quite powerful but it's not powerful enough to lift this entire load quickly what you need to look at when you build a rocket is something called thrust to weight ratio now I won't go through the complex maths but I do have a mod installed. If you can get this mod, install it. Let's put symmetry to one. Now, if I stick this mod on the rocket here, it brings up all these numbers. What the hell is this? I don't need all these numbers. I have no idea what it means. Well, my friends, it is quite simple. What you need, the thrust to weight ratio needs to be above one. That's pretty good. It's above one. That means it'll push us up. If it was below one, now let's go ahead, fiddle with the numbers here, reduce the thrust limiter. See, now it's gone under one. Now, if we launch this, this rocket would fall to the ground because it got, hasn't got enough thrust to weight ratio. So anything above one is going to mean it's going to go up. One means it's going to stay where it is, and any lower means that it's going to fall to the ground with hilarity and explosions. So this is at 1.18. I suggest you can have something a bit higher than that if you're using a mod like this to build. So we'll get rid of that rocket. Let's go back to engines. And I, show, I advise you to, to pick the mainsail engine. Now let's go ahead and pick that on there. And you see, look at that. Now we don't need all that. I normally suggest having 1.5 minimum for thrust to weight ratio for launching from the launch pad. You could do things like use a thrust limiter, or you could do something simple like while you're flying, you could use the con the throttle controls to control it. Now I'll show you all about that when we're launching this up in space. Okay, so we've got this rocket. It's probably enough to get us into space. I did talk about delta V, which is the change in velocity. Now, if you see these, it says it's got this triangle and the V, that's delta V. And basically, it's a number, it's like meters per second. It's the amount of speed you can change by. So, like, if we were in space in vacuum and we're traveling at zero, we burst, we burn the entire tank, so this rocket, we travel at about 200, 2,168 meters per second. Now, that changes when you're in the atmosphere. As I should have shown you the atmosphere specs, this is the ap this vacuum specs. So that's what the speed would be at in a vacuum. Now, if I if we launch the rocket, we started this rocket at a high altitude, you see this increases. That's because we'll have atmospheric losses within the atmosphere. From drag and other things, probably uh, lift surfaces are also simulated in the game. It does get a bit complex, but let's try and keep it simple, shall we? Now, I said you need at least 1.5, we can throttle that. 
Now let's have a look at the fuel flow. Now if you right click on your rocket engine, a nice new part thing they've added to the game is fuel request overlay. Now I click that, and look the fuel is running from these tanks into this rocket. Now if I go ahead, I'm not sure if it'll work on this tank, and disable the fuel flow. No, it's not showing it. Showing still being fed. But one thing we can do, if I bring both these tanks up, we can set priority, flow priority. Now say we want to have the fuel flowing up. We want this to empty first and then this one to empty second. So if I put this to one, I think, <laughs> Now, sorry for that break, I was just checking to see if I was right, and I think I was. Okay, so the fuel flow works in such a way that the higher the number, say like I put this to 1, or 31 on there, that means this tank will drain first and empty down there, and then this tank will drain second. And you're saying, why does that matter? Well, it matters because of this, and it is the centre of mass. Now, if the centre of mass is higher up in the rocket the better because let's go ahead and put some winglets on it to show you what I mean and by the way these winglets will help you control your rocket while you're launching up into space get these back up now look at the center of mass if I bring up center lift center of lift is behind center of mass which is what you want because if you got air flowing past your rocket the higher the center of mass, basically, the more stable your rocket is while launching. And you want the center of lift to be behind that. Because otherwise, if you had center of lift, I wonder if we can do that. Up at the front here, not too far forward. Say the center of lift is up here. Basically, what will happen is the center of mass will want to be in front of the center lift so if you accidentally steer too much or too quickly the rocket will flip around and you will have disaster strikes so what you want to do is make sure your center lift is behind there so that's why most people add winglets in real life you normally don't see that that's because the rockets are engineered to be perfect but another tip you can do to help that center of mass stay in front of the center lift is set this bottom tank to be priority one. So as that these tanks empty, you can see the center of mass goes forward a bit more, giving you a bit more stability. It might reduce the amount of control you have while you're launching up, but you don't need too much as long as you point in prograde when you're launching up. And we'll get into that as I said when we're launching. So there you go, we have the basic launch stage. This will probably get into space, but let's make sure we get into space, shall we? Now, if we go back to decoupling, you've got the side decouplers as well. So if we click the radial decoupler, I suggest put symmetry to two here, because we have a little trick which will help you get further into space. Now, let's put it up a bit higher so we get higher center mass. Let's get a fuel tank for our endeavors. I, have, I suggest getting the FLT-800. We don't need huge ones, huge boosters. And that's what these basically are boosters now we have the fuel tank let's go ahead and make sure that those fuel tanks will be secure to the rocket now what you can do is use the strut connector which is the old way of doing things this strut has normally referred to as space tape goes onto the side of your rocket as such fuel tanks you probably could get away with just one on the top one on the bottom but I like to do it one on either side, it makes it look cool. But another feature they've added to the game, which I have to talk about, is auto strut. Now let's get the auto strut up. Now if I click auto strut, you should see some arrows pointing away. Now if I click auto strut, should first heaviest part, which is the center rocket here. Now if I do to the root part, now the auto strut is connecting all the way up to the capsule and then also you have this 
option of grandparent parts. Not entirely sure what that is. I think that's the center of the rocket or something. I'm not entirely sure. I still have to read into that, but there you go. That's like, as you see where it heads anyway there. You can always visualize where on the rocket that auto strut is going to. What that basically does is create exactly the same thing as the struts, but sort of like invisible, which might make your design look cool. Say you can't put a strut there, it's too far away. Now, don't get me wrong, these struts are still useful. So don't skimp on the struts. So, and there's also another feature called rigid attachment. Say you have no struts on your, the, and perhaps you can't unlock the struts and you're in career mode. You could put rigid attachment on, and this will make the attachment to this decoupler rigid, and I think you can do the same there. So these will be rigid attached to each of them. Now, what these will do is stop them flailing about while you're launching. However, as I've heard on the forums, I have not tried it, that these will make these less wobbly, but they're easier to break. Now, sometimes you want to have a bit more bend in your rocket, which is what we'll leave here. I'll engage the auto strut to the heaviest part, just to make it a bit easier on us. And now let's go to the engines because we need engines for these. And let's go for the Reliant, no. Yeah, Reliant engines. Okay, and also let's go to aerodynamics and let's put a nice nose cone on it. We could either use the aerodynamic nose cone or the advanced nose cone. I like them. They look cool. <laughs> anyway, now we've got them up. Let's in fact stage this correctly. We want these rockets and this rocket to fire at the same time. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. So see, this all, those two will fire, then they'll decouple, then that will fire. We don't want that. We want that one to fire the same time as the two side ones. Then once these have run out, they'll decouple. Then once these has these rock this these fuel tanks have run out, this will decouple. And then this rocket will fire up, get us into orbit. Then we can use it to deorbit, get back to Kerbin, detach that, enter the atmosphere safely with the heat shield, and use the parachute to come down safely. This is a simple design. You don't need to faff about and make something awesome yet. You can take your time. Now, one little tip you can do. Now, if I go to fuel tanks, you'll have this external fuel duct. Now, this is an awesome, ingenious idea, and I don't know why they haven't done it in real life. Because basically, it saves a lot more fuel. Now, first off, before I touch that, if I go ahead, turn on fuel request overlay, you can see the fuels running from the center rockets. Now, if I get the external fuel, fuel duct, attach it to the outer rocket, then to the inner rocket. Now, this also can affect the weight of your rocket. If I attach this down here, the fuel will flow from these tanks to this tank, making more fuel in this tank, so the central mass will stay further down. But if we attach it to the highest tank, the fuel will stay in the higher tank and keep the weight up high on the rocket, keeping us much more stable when we're launching. And that is what we would like. <laughs> I have no idea why we have that accent, but also you can see this fuel flow. Now fuel will flow from these tanks into this tank, down to the bottom tanks to this rocket as well. And basically what's happening is that it's using the fuel from these tanks to feed this engine first, so then when these tanks are empty, these will detach, but we'll have full fuel tanks, giving us a lot more delta V. Now if you look at the delta V in atmospheric, in space, I mean, vacuum, this number here, now, if I take the fuel duct away, look, it goes down. But if I attach that fuel duct, it goes up. Now, that is awesome because that saves you a lot more fuel. It means you have more fuel to play around with when you're in space. Okay, so we have that. Let's talk about control, should we? Let's get rid of that. Now, controlling rocket is one of the most important things. You need to make sure you're point in prograde while in the, you're in the atmosphere, otherwise you'll flip the hell out and destroy all your kerbals in the process. So, what I suggest you can do is go to command and control. Now you've got these things. 
RCS thrusters, veneur engines, and reaction control wheels. Now, the reaction control wheels are awesome because you don't need any fuel for them except electricity. Now, where do you place them? That's the thing. The best place would be to place them in the s near the center of mass, so then it rotates on the center of mass. But you may need it in space. Say, like you're a large rocket, you need it to control your spacecraft. So the probably the best place would be up here. So the controls all up here, so everything's pivoted up here, but it's fighting against the center of mass. So a way around that is you can use RCS thrusters or veneur ranges. RCS thrusters are the original thrusters. Let's put four on the symmetry and put them around here. Now, what we want to do is put them equal distance from the center of mass. So let's go down here. That's roughly right. Don't forget the fuel will drain and the center of mass will go further up as you go along. But these will give us X control. You can't do that, but you for RCS thrusters, you need RCS fuel tanks. Now you can place RCS fuel tanks anywhere. These are small ones, larger ones, but don't forget every time you add something onto this, the amount of delta V goes down because the more weight you have, the less you lower your thrust to weight ratio go down and the less fuel you'll have because you carry more weight. Now, rather than adding those fuel tanks, what we could do is, if I go back to command and control, the new engines. Now, if we place these up here, let's do four. Now, the veneur engines aren't like thr RCS, they had RCS thrusters. You can see they've got nozzles up, down, left, right, and they help you control. They're good for docking and going back and forward as well for slight control because your rocket will boost you too fast to a station and you'll smash into it. But veneur engines only shoot out the side. You do have an RCS port which you can place anywhere, but we'll leave that for now. So that'll thrust sideways in either direction. And what we'll need to do is hold on Alt, copy that part, and put the same down here. Oops. Now that'll give us extra control, but the veneur engines don't use RCS tanks. They use the fuel from these tanks. And I want uh, fuel overlay. As you can see, that fuel goes to those tanks. And if I click on that one, the fuel for this one goes from that tank there. Okay. Now that is the basics. That's your first rocket or largest rocket. Now, rather than go into much, too much more detail, let's go and launch this. Um, let's call this. Launcher 1, because that's an awesome name, isn't it? No, it's not. Let's call it something a bit more better. Jibs. How... <laughs> How do I launch rocket? Awesome stuff. That's an awesome name, and everything should be named something like that. <laughs> Anyway, let's save that. Don't forget to save your design so you can come back and adjust it later if it doesn't work. And then launch. Okay, now we're here on the launch pad. A few things to go into first. Now if we go to map view, you press the M key, you go into map view. And if I fast forward time using the, uh, the periods key and the full stop key on the keyboard, you can see we're rotating, the plants rotating. And basically, that's just showing us that we're going around in a clockwise direction. But why is this important, you're asking? Well, if we click on the nav ball, bring that up, click on this number here, you see orbit, and that's 175 meters per second. Now, if we launch up, we want to travel east to be able to add that 175 second meters per second for free on our launch. If we go the other way, we'll lose 175. 75 meters per second from our delta V. So anyway, let's get into it. First off, you've got controls, W, S, A, E, S, D, and Q and E to rotate. 
Now to engage these veneur engines, press the R to engage RCS. Now if I do left right, you should see puffs of smoke coming out of that. That'll give us extra control. And also press T, that'll switch the SAS on to enable all these controls, which means that if once we point it in a direction, switch on the SAS will keep on pointing that direction without drifting off it. And if you're in career mode, you may only have the stability assist to start off with. So that's all I'm going to use in this launch. Anyway, quick controls, Z for boost step, X for boost down completely, or shift and control to control the throttle. Symbols and space part stage. Anyway, make sure your throttle is full, SAS is engaged, RCS is on, give you extra control. The winglets will also give you extra control, as you can see. In three, two, one, press the spacebar and you'll go up. Yes, we have launched. Up, we shall go. Now, let's make sure that's back on surface. Now, what you want to do is as soon as possible shift to the right. Now, you see these rockets on the outer side have shut down. You want to press spacebar to stage and get rid of them. Okay. Now, what you want to do is make sure you stay on this prograde vector, the yellow circle. Stay close to the center, but you still have to go sideways. This is called the gravity turn. Now, we're traveling too fast, as you can see from the air around this craft. So, slow us down a bit. We still want to accelerate. We still want to increase that number. But we still want to make sure we're in the center here. Not too far, otherwise we'll flip out. A bit faster, perhaps. And you want to pull this prograde vector sideways. Basically, and that's what you're doing. That's why I'm on the right side of the circle. And this is probably not the best gravity turn in the world. But what you want to do, what the gravity turn is, is coming out the thickest part of the atmosphere. And then when you come to the thinner part of the atmosphere, as is shown by here, so we're coming into space. We're coming into well in space <laughs> thinner atmosphere the easier it is to go sideways the less fuel you waste and yes I am going sideways a bit too much because I'm not concentrating and you can see the orbit is going high now normally people launch to 100 kilometers but I'm gonna go for 200 just because I'm not paying attention you can also get the nav ball up while you're in this mode and look at that, we've run out of fuel at almost 200 kilometers. So go back out to map view, press space, stage. Press space again and engage your second rocket. You can kill that now, because what we want to do is go back to map view. Now hover over somewhere over the, the uh, orbit line, I suppose we could call it. Click on it and you get two options, warp here, so you time accelerate today, or add maneuver. So once you've added the maneuver, you can drag these across to make any crazy shape you want. But we just want to get into orbit. Now let's bring that apple up because it keeps on going down there. So let's get that back on the plane. Or, or orbit. There you go. Now let's stretch this out. And we want this to be a circle and each side has to be over 70 kilometers to make sure that we stay in space. So let's see what we got. 200 meters, which is the apoapsis, that's the highest point your orbit, and almost 200 there on the current periapsis. That's a good maneuver note. And if you look down here, you've got estimated burn, one minute, 15 seconds, node in two minutes, 40 seconds. That's the time until you get to the node. You want to burn half before and half after that. So let's quickly point on the nav ball. Here you've got that blue marker, which is your nav ball, your uh, maneuver node marker. There's a handy little marker to make sure that you're pointing in the right direction. Now what we want to do is accelerate time until we half this number. So at half of one minute is 30 seconds, half of 15 seconds is 7.5 seconds so we need to be 30 
seven seconds, I suppose, start our burn. And we've gone too far there, as you can see. Always make sure you time accelerate reservedly, not too fast. Anyway, let's boost up because we can do orbit corrections when we're in orbit itself. The first task is to make sure you're, you're not going to fall back to them to the planet. And just keep on burning and expanding that circle. As you can see, this is probably the better representation of it. You can see that arc coming out, expanding. Basically, you're going faster. You're still falling. But you're going to be falling further afield. Now, what an orbit is, to be a bit more technical, is a continuous fall. So, you're falling, but also you're travelling sideways. So, you keep on falling and travelling sideways continuously. Now, because there's no air in space, that means that you're going to not slow down at all. Just point back on the marker. And once you're coming down to the last bit, boost slowly. Especially if you want to do an extremely accurate manoeuvre. Now you see when it goes green, that's saying that you've probably done a good burn. So let's click that. And for this part, yes you have, because you're in orbit. Yes, we can celebrate! <laughs> ah, yes. The advantages of space travel. <laughs> anyway, if we have a look at our stats, we probably don't have as much fuel if I'd done a proper burn. Get into orbit, you can see liquid fuel and oxidizer. If I bring the mech jet back up, Delta V stats. We got about almost a thousand meters per second. That, in fact, is enough probably to get us for an orbit towards the moon. And we can use the moon as a slingshot to come back around, back to Kirby. But we're not going to do that here because this is just a simple orbit tutorial. Now, if this is at the point you've got into orbit, this has helped you, click the, click the like button on the video. It always helps with my channel and me pr pressing me on to do more tutorials for you guys. And if, if you're an advanced Kerbal user, hit the click, click the like button as well. But anyway, let's go and finish this off by returning to Kerbin. Let's make another maneuver note. Say over here. Now you want the retrograde maneuver. Now, by the way, you can play around with this. As you can see, what happens when you do certain burns and you do complex orbits but do note that sometimes it can take a lot of fuel just to for, for example burn up and down to alter your orbit slightly but all we want to do is return to curving so let's use the retrograde marker which is reverse of which way you're traveling and that looks good. We're going to land somewhere on here. Or let's bring it over a bit. Okay, let's fast forward time. And this time, let's use the little arrow here. Fast forward to maneuver node. It gives us three minutes before the maneuver node. So we don't miss it this time. Now let's get rid of you. As you can see, this maneuver node is 25 seconds. So we want to burn... 13 seconds before that, and we're out of warp. So let's point to that maneuver node. Now do a slow time acceleration. To about 13 seconds and boost up. Now this is going to be harsh re-entry and I want to show you why, because why you need a heat shield. Even sometimes you don't. Okay, we're almost up on the move node. Finish. Now boost down slowly, slowly. Ooh, I we boosted a bit too far there, but never mind. 
we're still heading down to the planet now this is why i said don't use what you see in front of you to control your rocket now i can go up and down there in this orientation because it works fine but if i'm in this direction you might get confused with the up and down that's why you use your nav ball make sure you know where you're traveling how you want to travel say like you want to travel retrograde so i point towards that direction and i boost there or i can move side to side as long as you know where you are on the nav ball you'll be fine now i said we'll need to re-enter and we've done our re-entry burn so we can now stage for the final return now i suggest clicking this to surface so you know what the retrograde for the surface because it's slightly different and i have had times where i was in orbit i pointed at orbit retrograde and it's flipped it out because it's because these surfaces at the bottom acts like lifting surfaces but i won't get into that now because it's a bit more complex anyway let's time accelerate to the surface and about 70 kilometers we enter the atmosphere now let's quickly point retrograde right click on the heat shield bring it up now you see the ablator that is something that burns off your craft when you're entering the atmosphere due to the heat once that goes to zero that heat shield is no good anymore so pray it survives the re-entry you can see it's getting hot there we're entering quite fast but we're now decelerating because the atmospheric is thick enough to slow us down. Now, when do you pop your parachute? That's a good question. If you right click on that, bring that up. You see it says unsafe. I hope this is unsafe because it's going to burn up the atmosphere and rip off due to the, the high winds that we're going through. Well, let's turn the SEF off and the RCS because we no longer need it now we have risky and then safe now it's safe to deploy the parachute but it does slow you down so much that you are going really slow so what I'm going to do is time accelerate let's deploy the parachute now the parachute will f only partially open until you enter about 100 kilometers up so let's go on view on Jebediah and you see this altitude radar when that goes to 1000 the parachute will open up and slow us down more what you can do here to save weight but if you leave it attached you might save money bring the jet is in it anyway and you see the other side of the aircraft uh, spacecraft going to crash into over there in the distance let's jettison the heat shield I wonder if we could. No, we probably can't. There you go, destroyed. And let's fast forward time. When you're in the atmosphere, by the way, and you fast forward, you get uh, physics time accelerator. When you're in space, you get uh, dam accelerator or uh, normal time accelerator. What it is, is that the atmosphere causes things like drag and everything which needs a bit more computation so you can't travel as fast and if you did you probably end up destroying your craft anyway guys if you enjoyed this let's get our kerbals on eva and by the way you probably have a spacesuit on your this is another mod so let's get the other kerbals out and then we can call this how do i get into orbit or launch a rocket or build a rocket or whatever else you want to call it if you enjoyed this leave a like leave a comment if you want some particular type of tutorial and I will see what I can do so I plan on doing more of these I'm Orbita trust me I'm an engineer Nah. <laughs>